I welcome all to worship this morning, not just who is in the church, but also who are looking at the live screening at home. And also I welcome visitors who are there for the baptism of the baby today. You are made well, very welcome here by all the congregation, I am sure. Now we shall um, have the intimations. And I know here I do it again. Please be upstanding for the word of God. The response from the beetle was, you've done it again. <laughs> Please, God, forgive me. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. You make everything right now, will Thank you, please? You. Thank you. Well, I'm not sure. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, tea and coffee will be served as usual at the end of the service in the Dunn Memorial Hall, and all are very welcome to join us there. Largs United Guild will meet tomorrow, Monday the 7th of March, in the Dunn Memorial Hall, where the very Reverend Albert Bogle will be speaking about Kazunzu, the Village of Hope project. Christian Aid Lent lunches start this Wednesday, the 9th of March, for the next five weeks. These are held in the Clark Memorial Church Hall from 12 noon till 1.30. If anyone's able to help with waitressing, if they could please contact either Ray Head or Susan Stevenson. The funeral of the late Christine Little will take place on Wednesday the 9th of March at 11 o'clock here in St John's and then at 12 noon at the crematorium. The request from the family is that all wear bright colours to the funeral, please. Next Saturday, Largs United Guild are holding a daffodil tea in the Dunn Memorial Hall. So that's next Saturday, the 12th of March, from 10 o'clock till 12 noon. And next Sunday, there will be a retiring offering at the end of the service for the people of Ukraine. Bulletins are available for collection by distributors today at the end of the service, if you haven't already collected them on the way in. And if any elders still have their plastic document wallets, if they could please return them to Richard Kane as soon as possible. And that's me, thank you. Thank you, Richard. And when we speak of Ukraine, we look to the lit candle on the communion table, and that is symbolic of the light, light of Christ. And what I'm going to do is, in a sense, on behalf of the people of Ukraine and on behalf of all in Russia who do not want war either, or all who do not want war, let us just read, and it's from the Psalms of uh, CH4, and I thought the words of this hymn were beautiful and right, so I'm going to share them now. We lay our broken world in sorrow at your feet, haunted by hunger, war, and fear, oppressed by power and hate. Here human life seems less than profit, might, and pride. Though to unite us all in you, you lived and loved and died. We bring our broken towns, our neighbors hurt and bruised. You show us how old pain and wounds for new life can be used. We bring our broken loves, friends parted, families torn. Then in your life and death we see that love must be reborn. We bring our broken selves, confused and closed and tired. Then through your gift of healing grace, new purpose is inspired. Come, Spirit, on us breathe with life and strength anew. Find in us love and hope and trust and lift us up to you. 
Now may we begin our service singing the It's Me, It's Me, O Lord, Standing in the Need of Prayer. Now let us come together as a body of one in Christ. Let us pray. Living, loving God, we pray for peace in our world, not war. We pray for what is right and good, overcomes what is evil and is not of God. We pray for all who have lost hope, fearing always the worst, May your hope through your Son, Jesus Christ, touch their hearts and souls and heal the inner wounds that they hide from those around them. In all this, we come to you believing in your abiding presence among we, your people. Your light can and shall shine in the darkest of places in our world, in our town, in our cities, and we trust in you as your promise never fails, saying, I shall always be with you. Your strengthening power shall strengthen us when we are weak, shall be with us when we are trying to cope with difficult situations in our life. The death of a loved one, grief can be sore. May your love be as a balm to that wounded soul. Be with all who are struggling in a daily basis, whether because of pain, loneliness, loss of work, which brings monetary problems. Hearts can be broken due to the words and actions of others. To each of us, help us to recognize the tongue can bring so much pain to another. It can be as sharp as a two-edged sword hurting and paining to those whom it is directed to. Help us to recognize the spoken word once uttered cannot be forgotten and shall always create a barrier between one with another. Now let us come together and bring to the foot of the cross a person or persons whom we know who may need to know of your presence in their lives this day. We bring them to you now. Now let us share together the prayer taught to us through the Son, Jesus Christ, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. May we now join together in our baptismal hymn, and we shall have the baptismal party coming into church as the hymn is being sung. And that is, A Little Child, the Saviour Came. Now, this is a special time for all the family, and especially, I know it's the day for the baby, but Jessica, the big sister, is quite excited, and she's, she sees this as a special day too. And when we're through in the vestry, she was so interested in looking at one of our Bibles, and it was full of um, bookmarks. So she's got one to take home, and we explain what she does with her bookmark when she reads her story at home. <laughs> So I say, we welcome here Jennifer and Alan, who have brought their daughter to be baptized here in St. John's Church. 
It's a special day for this family and also a special day for our church family. We read in the Bible that Jesus was himself baptized for our sake in the River Jordan. He was commissioned by the Holy Spirit. Our authority for celebrating the sacrament is Jesus. For after his resurrection, he commanded his disciples, saying, Full authority in heaven and earth has been committed to me. Go forth, therefore, and make all my nations, all nations my disciples. Baptize them everywhere in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. And be assured, I will be with you always until the end of time. And by baptism, we are received into Christ's church. It marks the beginning of our Christian walk, where we are offered a new life in Christ and the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we are given the opportunity to, to serve in his church and in the world. Children don't understand these things, but God's grace to us and to our children do not depend on age or understanding. It is the duty of parents who present their child for baptism to confess the faith into which their child is to be baptized and to promise to bring them up in that faith and in the ways of Christ and his church. So, Jennifer and Alan, you're required to take the vows involved in baptism. And could I ask you both to please be standing? And I say to you both, do you, in presenting your child for baptism, desire that she becomes a Christian? Do you believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord? Let us pray. Loving God, our Father, we thank you for our life in Jesus, your Son, we thank you that he became one of us, that he died and rose for us. Be with us in the power of your spirit. Use this water and our faithfulness to Christ, that this child whom we baptize today may receive your grace and may grow in faith among your people. And may we all realize that as without life-giving and purifying water, we are unable to live. So without your spirit, we are powerless to save ourselves. Hear these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. The little one's preparing for the baptism. She, she's revving up. <laughs> revving up nicely and quietly. And Veron Veronica, I keep forgetting. And Veronica, you're going to come up. Oh. Jessica. <laughs> Thankfully, Jessica's not been baptized today. <laughs> She's been baptized. <laughs> so we're now going to ask the mom and dad and Jessica, could you come up and hand the baby to dad? That's it. Are you all right? Oh, just come up here. Come up here and up onto the chancel. Then you can see, everybody can see you. All right. Doesn't she look lovely today? She's looking lovely, isn't she? Alan, name your child Elise. And I'll now take Elise. <laughs> oh, it's all these lovely frilly, the slippy too. <laughs> now look at this. Do you think she's behaving herself? Do you think so? So I'll say this. I'll say, Elise, God loves you with his everlasting love. All right. And now, this is the part where the baby's going to be baptized now. And do you want to see her? No, well, we'll just, uh huh. We'll not, we'll not push it. Elise Margaret Whiteman, 
I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And may the Holy Spirit descend upon you and indwell in your heart forever. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> and they're going to be playing the Lord bless you and keep you. And the dad is going to take this wee one with the, his big sister around to meet the people in the church. All right. <laughs> this is lovely. <laughs> There we are. You go around and show everyone your new, your new little uh, sister. Are we ready? just coming around the back and down the side. They're just taking their time showing off, at least rightly so. Yes, she's now getting a bit more confident as the older sister. I think she's actually starting to enjoy it now. <laughs> she's recognized this is her day too. Yes. So you go and sit down and you'll hand the baby to the other godparent. But if there's any problems, we'll deal with that, and mum would take the baby if there's any real problems. <laughs> so I now ask the parents to stand. I say to you, this child is now baptized into Jesus Christ. We joyfully, in the name of Jesus Christ, receive Elise, and welcome her as a member of the one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. Your child belongs to God in Christ. From, I thought she was going to be walking there, this little. <laughs> I saw her making for the floor. I thought she's going to be walking. Because I've heard the older sister walk before she was one year old, so I thought you were having a go too. <laughs> your child belongs to Jesus Christ. And from this day, your child is part of this Christian family and there shall always be a place for her here. Tell her and unfold her the, and to her the treasures she has been given this day, so that she may know why she has been baptized this day. And as she grows, may she have a personal need to make her own response in faith and love and come in due time to share in the sacrament of Holy Communion. With this in mind, do you promise, depending on the grace of God, to teach Elise the truths and duties of the Christian faith and by prayer and example, bring her up in the life and worship of the church? The Lord bless you and keep you and enable you to faithfully keep the promises which you have made to him today. Please be seated. And I now say to the congregation, this sacrament lays solemn obligation upon you, the people of God, and in gathering here, you represent the whole Catholic and universal church. Will you be faithful in your calling as members of Christ's church and welcome this child into your midst? and promise with God's help to be committed yourself to live before all God's children in a kindly and Christian way and encourage them into a saving, living relationship with Jesus Christ, your Savior. As a sign of accepting this responsibility for this child and all other children in our midst, I ask, that you, in response to these words, that you call out together as one, we do. 
Now let us pray. Lord, bless the child we have received into our midst this day. Bless her that she may be surrounded by the security, love, and example and encouragement she needs. Bless Jennifer and Alan. Keep them faithful to the vows and promises they have made in your presence this day. Give them grace and wisdom to teach their child your truths and to do their utmost to encourage her in the need of a loving relationship with her Savior, Jesus Christ. As we have received Elise into our midst and promised to play our due part in her spiritual nourishment, we ask you, most gracious God, to touch us all again this day with the grace of our baptism. Give us new lives for old, new spirit, new commitment, in place of that which has grown tired, stale, dead in our lives, that we may rise and go from here, refreshed and renewed to whatever awaits us, trusting fully in you through your Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. She's doing well now. She's really in full volume now. <laughs> and we're going to now ask this a teacher from the Sunday school, our Sunday school, to come forward and present the Bible on behalf of the church to Elise. So now at this point, we're going to be singing, for my sake and the gospels go. And at this point, teenagers or any, uh, the godparents uh, and the little ones, any other little ones who are here, go out and go through the back and have good fun with some of the crafts that they do, etc. And that would be nice for you all. So we sing, for my sake and the gospels go. In case you were thinking I was kissing one of your children on the way out, it was my own little grandson I was giving a kiss to. He's joined us this morning. <laughs> In case you're thinking, who is she kissing all these children for? <laughs> we're now going to share our reading this morning. Uh, thank you, Christine. This morning's reading is taken from Deuteronomy 
chapter 6 and the first nine verses. Hear the word of God. These are the commands, decrees and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear, O Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Love the Lord, your God. Amen. And God will bless the reading of his word to us today. Thank you. We shall now sing together the hymn, um, Be Still My Soul. There's always a little problem at the back and I can see all the scuttling around of the young ones. But they do a great job for us because every week they do it always like professionals. Just maybe this week something went wrong. <laughs> so I thought we'd cut the hymn a little short because we're all trying to remember the words because we didn't have the words in front of us in the hymn book. And I was keeping looking up at this as if to say that would be different from there. <laughs> which is really a bit silly of me, isn't it? But then again, I kept thinking, well, maybe it still is up there. No, it's not. <laughs> so, uh, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my God. Today in this church, a child has been baptized into the family of God. It's a special day for the family and the church. Because when we look to Mark's gospel, we are told that Jesus welcomes children. And Jesus desires that they come to be part of a family of God. And he speaks further to say 
that whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. He seems to be saying here that we have to be childlike, to have belief in him through faith. But how can we be childlike? We are mature adults. Nothing can change that. But when we search further into his words, we realize that is not quite what he means. They go much deeper than that shallow thought. He is guiding our thoughts to what can keep us from having true faith in Christ Jesus. As adults, we can find and even make ourselves many stumbling blocks to take away from the road of faith. A child depends on her, his or her parents, puts her or his or her trust in them. And to have faith, that is a step we must take these steps like a child takes with his parents. We must take with Christ. We must step out, depend on his love, his strengthening power, and his saving grace. And in doing so, we shall find it. And as child trusts his parents, we then must put our trust in God. So often we adults think we only need to depend on ourselves. We do not need God through Jesus Christ. We can manage fine on our own. And because of that, we do not need to put our trust in anyone else. We are confident that we can deal with our own lives without leaning on Christ himself. Now, I have a photo among my family album, and it's of Alison, my oldest daughter, oldest child, actually. And the photo catches her taking her first steps. Her eyes are alight with pure joy at what she is doing and where she is going. And in that photo, you see her dad holding out his arms wide to receive her when she stumbles into his arms and his face is alight with happiness as he prepares to receive her. Now that scene in that family album is very symbolic of how I see we and Christ and the manner in which Christ desires us to come to him that of a child, depending on him, trusting he shall be waiting to take us in his arms and hold us that we feel protected, that we feel safe and we feel secure. And in a sense, that scene epitomizes the first walk of faith. Because to find faith, you have to step out, believing in childlike trust that Christ shall enfold you in his arms. And when Jesus points to us, as to a child, with regard to our faith, we also see a young child is still innocent of any form of pride and self-righteousness. But we adults can have both in abundance. And if our hearts are full of pride in ourselves, a pride so, so deep-rooted that leaves no room for thanking God for the qualities and gifts you have been given. And in all this completely self-righteous about your own importance, again, you are preventing the love of God from working in your life, blocking any personal awareness that you need him in your life. Coming back to those who bring their child to be baptized, we can learn so much from a passage that we have read from the book of Deuteronomy. These passages are speaking to the people of Israel, reminding them of God's commandment that they obey them if they call themselves God's people. And these particular parts of Scripture are called by the Jewish people, the Shema. And if they, 
if they called themselves God's people, they had to know all the words of the Scripture by heart. More than that, when they were worshipping, they had these words inscribed in small scrolls, and, and they attached them to their forehead and left arm. They were very much, they very much saw that religion and their faith was as part of their everyday living. So much of the laws that were given by Moses to the people of Israel had to be obeyed. There is much we can learn from the people of that time. We can make a habit of thinking of God through the sun only on a Sunday morning. I mean, that is why we have a church service, a time set aside in our busy week to worship him. And at that, some feel they are doing pretty well by coming week by week. But you see, that is not enough in the eyes of God. He wants each of us to be aware of him in our daily living, how we think, how we act, how we trust him with our lives, our decisions, the need in our darkest moments for his strengthening power to give thanks to him for what is in our life is good, not taking it for granted. He desires that we are aware of his presence in every part of our lives and that we never shut him out. And it can be so easy to shut God out of our lives. We all have busy lives and we can allow so much to stand in the way of growing as a Christian. And to grow as a Christian, you need to be part of a Christian fellowship. So let us remind ourselves of the words in Deuteronomy. What is that command God commanding us to do? If we profess to call ourselves Christian, so we are told Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And he continues to say, these two commandments are the base of the Christian faith. And he concludes, we must share them with our children. We must share them with our children's children. In other words, our faith in Jesus Christ should be the centrality of our family life. Yes, there is much else to fill up our family life, but there can be so much to fill up our lives that we push out time to speak to our children about Jesus, about the need to know him, and the need to be part of a church, whether through Sunday school or other youth organizations. If you do not teach your children, shall they hear about Jesus from the world around them? I think in the climate we are dealing with at the moment, there is every chance they will not. So we as Christians have that responsibility to share the Christian faith, that they too shall come to have faith, and teach their children. And that is the reason the couples who bring their child for baptism come, that they confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and that they promise to bring up their children in the Christian faith and encourage them in faith. Yes, we sometimes find there are parents who have brought their child for baptism and sometimes are not often seen in church again. But do you know, I try very hard not to be saddened by this because I believe that in each parent, seeds have been sown in their heart. And that in time when the child is, say, age for Sunday school, that they will try to carry out the promises that they make to God on that special day. 
And that child who lives in a Christian home has already been guided by Christian parents. I again believe and pray they are not lost to Christ's church, and neither are the parents. That is always my personal prayer. The congregation are not let off lightly because they too have to acknowledge that they are willing to guide the children in church and faith. And because of that, they too must do as the Lord commands, that they set an example of a Christian living to the young people in their midst. So let us again hear the words of the Lord, words that have not just to be spoken but lived. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. If each of us in this church, who are members of this church, profess these words, live them out, and share them with our youth today, whether it be family or church family, it is only then our churches shall grow from strength to strength. And God needs all our hands, our feet, our person, in the building up of his church. So let each of us look into our own, uh, into our own hearts and ask Jesus Christ, how can I begin to serve? Or, how can I continue to serve? Amen. In actual fact, I'm bringing this in just coming to my head just now. I spoke about, as Christians, I felt I wanted to amplify this that I said. I said, as Christians, uh, we must... Uh, have Christian fellowship if we call ourselves Christians. And the reason I say that is, I'll tell you this story, I've shared it before. A minister went to visit an old gentleman and he was sitting in the front of the fire sharing chat with them. And the old gentleman said, I don't go to church, but I, 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 I'm a Christian, I have faith and I don't need to go to the church. I can do all myself at home to be a Christian. And the minister didn't say anything at all, but he lifted the tongs at the side of the fireplace and he took out from that burning fire a piece of burning coal. And it was burning and red hot. And he took it out and he placed it on the grate and looked at it and watched it until it was cold and dead. And that was him saying to this gentleman, to keep our Christian life alive, we need other fellow Christians. We need fellow Christians to share with each other, to be there for each other, to share scripture together. We need to be together to grow as one in Christ. Amen. May we now dedicate our offering. Lord of all, as we dedicate our offering today, we do not just bring you our monetary gift, we bring ourselves and our church, saying, here we are, Lord, use me, use each of us in this church who would claim Christ as Savior to help further your kingdom here on earth. We ask this in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Thank you. Now we're going to close the worship with, it's a really bright, bright song, and I want it brightly sung, and then we'll probably sing it through twice. <laughs> All right? And that is, you, oh, I hope we've got the screen. <laughs> you shall go out with joy. That's us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may you leave this time of worship, believing God has heard each murmurings of every heart. Go now in peace, and may God's blessing rest upon you and all whom you love. I have never asked the question.